Hey gang, welcome to... Hey gang, today I want to cover for you a really tough topic uh, that I think gets a lot of us in trouble in not only private practice physical therapy, but just about any healthcare profession in general. This is something that I had to work through myself, and I hear a lot of other owners having to work through it as well. But it's basically, how can I scale my business, or how do I grow my business, but yet keep expert care? And I think underneath all of this, before we get into the actual how-to of uh, how to do this successfully, um, there's an underlying limiting self-belief that we have to address. And if we don't, if we're not aware of it, um, we can self-sabotage our own success. And it's basically this: I'm the best. And on some level, most of us as professionals, this is kind of like the uh, healthcare professional syndrome, but we, we think this on some level. And where it gets us into trouble is for us to grow a business, we have to be able to work on a whole bunch of different areas. But it's really tough to be an expert in patient care and be the best in internal marketing and be the best in external marketing and be the best uh, front office reception uh, private practice PT ever and be the best uh, coding and billing receptionist ever and take care of our finances and pay bills and do payroll and all these other things and really what we what we find out extremely quick in private practice and trying to grow our business is we're overwhelmed and if we break that down a little bit more here's kind of the the synopsis of what happens There's another little secret that comes with uh, I'm the best as well, and it's that if I'm the best, then nobody else can do it. And our actions will back up that, that thought. But uh, you know, uh, imagine you're juggling one ball. So uh, for the last uh, eight years, at least in my private practice, the only thing that I've really focused on, or the thing that I've focused on the most, is marketing. And that's what I like to teach uh, to other private practice owners, just because we've, we, we dove so deep uh, you know, marketing pretty much consumed my life, but we dove so deep in private practice marketing and learning how to do it. Um, but I, I don't pay attention to other areas um, just because I don't like to do them. So I found really good people in those other areas. So, you know, most of us, one of the last things we're going to give up is treating. So just providing patient care. Um, so that's one ball that we're juggling. And that's fine. You can juggle that ball, but then you need to go out and find other people. Uh, to do to at least how if you want to scale successfully if you want to grow your business then you're going to have to go out and find other people who know how to market who know how to do internal marketing external marketing who know how to do HR and personnel and finance and uh, billing and everything else that it takes to run a practice so we're trying to juggle that ball we're trying to juggle we'll say I am is internal marketing and just for the sake of this uh, simplistically Internal marketing is marketing to your past patient base. And then we have external marketing, so that's another ball. And then we have finance and billing and coding and compliance. Then we have HR. And then we have fun stuff like uh, logistics of the practice, so space, equipment, stuff like that. So we have logistics, uh, doing lease renewals, uh, you know, making sure that our facility is maintained the way that it's supposed to. We also have legal. We have accounting. We have policies and procedures. We have goal setting. I'm actually running out of room here. So we have goal setting, planning, etc. We have the actual management of the business, so management and metrics. And we can keep going here, but I think you get the idea. So 
like juggling one ball, really, really easy. If all you, so for example, for most of us, when we worked for somebody else, the only thing that we had to worry about was treating. Now that we're out on our own, all of a sudden we have to worry about all these other things and it becomes overwhelming because we're trying to juggle uh, 15 or 20 different balls all at one time and we start dropping balls and maybe we miss payroll, maybe we didn't uh, pay off a line of credit on time or maybe we miss, um, you, you know, something happens in our practice. Maybe we miss uh, an item in compliance, maybe we were to have Medicare uh, billing updates in and we didn't do that in time and now we we have to pay the piper for it. We have to you know, make up for that in some way. But there's a much better way to do it. And um, I wanna give one really quick example of how I made a major mistake in this area early on. Um, so I was probably in business for about a year. We were doing well. My initial business plan was for 48 patient visits a week. And we were routinely were over 100 visits. I didn't know how to scale. I didn't know how to get rid of any of this. And so basically I would just treat a full schedule uh, Monday through Friday, seven in the morning till eight at night. And then Saturdays I would treat from eight to 3.30. A lot of work. What else did I do? Well, Saturday night after everybody went to bed and Sunday I would do the admin, marketing, all this other stuff. And I'm juggling those balls. Um, so the one weird thing that I did early on, which was very, very foolish, and I know my, my bank even called me out on this, they had a courier service. So I was, you know, this is one component of money that I didn't need to do. Um, but whenever every, I, I think it was every Tuesday and Friday, I would hop in my car, drive 10 minutes over to the bank, make a deposit, and do any other banking that I had to do, and drive back. And finally, Barb was the lady's name that worked in the bank, and she said, hey, Chad, why don't you just use our courier service? And I was like, oh, you know, I just like to handle money myself. And she was like, no, really, like, there's better things that you could be doing with your time that are more valuable to your company. We wanna see you successful. You are successful early on. You could be even more successful if you would use those uh, 20 to 40 minutes each week and work on other areas of your business. I was like, wow, that is really smart for a bank teller. You're a genius, thank you. Let me sign up for the courier service, which was free, by the way. So, you, you know, you can, you can start handing some balls over to other people, um, and so whether you're outsourcing or whether you're bringing staff in to train and handle it, um, you can start working yourself out of a job. And that's the big game here, is like, if you're doing everything here on the, on the board and you are your business, you have to turn something over eventually or all the balls come crashing down.